New York Times released what appears to be a hit piece on British actor and political commentator Russell Brand, who the outlet accused of running a conspiracy-minded podcast. The British entertainer built an army of fans with his conspiracy-minded podcast now amid sex assault claims against him. They've become his whole world, the Times wrote. Brand is in an ongoing fight over sexual assault allegations from between 2006 and 2013, accusations that he vehemently denies. Following the accusations, Brand's management company has dropped him. YouTube also demonetized his channel, a move that alarmed many free speech advocates. A UK parliamentary committee chairwoman wrote to Rumble, urging the platform to take down his channel, as failing to do so would, quote, undermine the welfare of victims. The Times article repeatedly attempted to paint Brand alongside other controversial figures like Jimmy Dore and Tucker Carlson as conspiracy theorists. No surprises there. This article is interesting because it seems to take issue with the idea that Russell Brand would be a professional entertainer. It, it, it characterizes it as pathological, like he wants, he's obsessed with fame. I mean, he's, it's a, he's an actor. <laughs> it's his job. I don't know, did you want him to go back and get an engineering degree at age 40? You know, yeah. I don't, so he- That's he, a great point. He's it, doing you're the, right. It, it is exactly like that. He, he's doing the most benign sorts of things. I mean, okay, he's not doing Hollywood anymore. He started a YouTube channel. He's found an audience. Uh, he gets lumped in, I think, politically with other figures that aren't really a close match. Same with Jimmy Dore, to be honest. They, they're both people who have long associated themselves with a lot of leftist ideas, a lot of populist policies like universal health care. Russell Brand is British, so he automatically has bought into a lot of things that are far to the left of where American politics are. He meditates. He's vegan. You know, he has been forthcoming even before the um, sexual assault scandal recently about regrets that he has about his own um, misogyny in the past. That's not making up for more recent accusations. But I, I'm just, he he's a different kind of mm -hmm. a guy than someone like Andrew Tate, with whom he's compared, to whom he's compared in this article. It's very different from Andrew Tate, uh, who is accused uh, very, you know, credibly of a lot of extremely bad behavior. And, you know, and I've, when we've talked about Andrew Tate, I've urged, I've uh, called for due process. I said that sometimes the whole tra uh, sex trafficking narrative really gets uh, exaggerated by law enforcement and media people. So we'll see how that turns out. But you know, Brand is not. The, the article goes to great pain. The New York Times article goes to great pains to paint Brand as paranoid about these accusations. That it's right. part of some concerted effort to harm him or constrain him because of the things he said. But that is explicitly what it is. When when they when the um, the Sunday Times, which did this article, they acknowledge in the article. I pulled it up again. They say that the the women talked to the Sunday Times. This this or this article got organized, and and these women made these accusations. I think most of them, or virtually all of them, for the first time ever, because of Brand's newfound prominence as an online wellness influencer with millions of followers on YouTube and other sites. They saw. The effect the things he was he was saying was having, or rather that the things he's saying were drawing an audience and were making him popular and people were tuning in, and so they set out to destroy him. Now that has nothing to do with the the accuracy of the underlying accusations. Sure. Maybe they are accurate. But the reason they came out now and they've been organized was because as, as part of battle against the kind of thing he's doing. Well look, you, you could frame that differently as uh, he's someone who has uh, is g regaining the power and influence to perhaps exploit other people. So we want to warn folks. It's not necessarily, it doesn't have to necessarily be because you want to take someone down, then because they've become politically relevant. I mean, you could argue that um, accusations against Joe Biden for sexual misconduct that came out during the 2019-2020 election were just meant to bring him down, but also you could see how if you had been victimized by someone who was basically an anonymous citizen, who wasn't really doing anything, who wasn't in a position of power, who was a retired VP, then you might not be inclined to take the public heat of being an accuser of a powerful man unless you thought that the stakes were really high again because he was running for I mean, president. He was a very, Brand was a very, um, he, he was a, a TV presenter. He was in a, a string of movies as a mm -hmm. lot of this behavior the, 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 which dates to the time the alleged behavior was happening, 
and there was no, there wasn't this yeah, takedown organized I, then. All I'm saying is it could go either way. I think yeah. that there's a, a more charitable way and a less charitable way you can read this. But regardless of what the victim's motives were or the accuser's motives were, I think the media's motives are a lot more clear. And the way they stack references to all of these different figures, they allude to the fact that his allies like Matt Taibbi have remained loyal. Um, yeah. You know, and the, and the mainstream media obviously hates Matt Taibbi for his involvement in the Twitter files um, and, and reporting on Russiagate as a hoax. Uh, you know, Jimmy Dore similarly became a, a bet noir because of his uh, commentary on COVID mismanagement, right. et cetera. So it does really feel like a lot of parts of this article are guilt by association. It, it also is just so weird the way that they are making a desire to be successful professionally into a kind of ego-driven like pathology. pathology. So they write, for example, at the time, Brand's more than two-decade quest for lasting attention had been proceeding apace along two tracks. This quest for He's an actor. No, I'm so, I'm so glad you're pointing that out. That's I mean, maybe actors point. are all yeah. narcissists. Maybe media right. figures are all narcissists. We're so narcissists that we, but like, we why hope just... that you watch us and like us. <laughs> there, we're, I'm admitting we're conceding this horrible, dark secret right. that um, it's better to be liked and, and watched if you're an entertainment and news figure. <laughs> Also, they seem to take issue with the way that he labels his videos, which is, you know, new YouTube clickbaity kind of videos. Well, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, I, I can't imagine doing something of that nature. He's, they, they write, his episode titles charted the ideological swerve of a man who once used a celebrity to elevate progressive ca causes. Out caps, state of fear, COVID propaganda exposed, leak audio proves Trump right. And they don't, yeah. you know. Look, I, I mean, that's the real problem. It's not progressive anymore. I mean, it, now it's a, it's outside the, it, it's part of this outsider, counter mainstream, anti elite area that yeah. all the people you're mentioning live, which sometimes includes leftist ideas and sometimes yeah. includes libertarian and right wing <laughs> ideas. Yeah. Uh, it, when, it, when it was just a more acceptable, you know, progressivism in, in like the Elizabeth Warren framing, then it was okay. <laughs> well, look, and I will acknowledge, like, I'm someone who has, Long found Russell Brand to be interesting, partly because of his politics and very charming and persuasive in in mm -hmm. interviews for a long time. And I have at times been frustrated at the conservative framing of his videos because I think the core of his message is not conservative. But there there is an obvious effort, like many people on the internet, to appeal to what the algorithm on YouTube wants, which is more aggressive conservative content. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe someone should talk to the owners of YouTube about why it is that framing videos in a right leaning direction seems to get you more clicks than saying, I want universal health care. But that's what it is. So then to blame him for what is a broadly understood phenomenon seems to be odd. YouTube didn't just blame him. They demonetized him. Right. Again, over, I, I wrote about this. We talked about this. We don't have to spend a lot of new time on it, but um, they demonetized him over, not over a piece of content he created on the site or any other site or something he said, but because of his IRL conduct, mm -hmm. which is a step that is in their, is actually in their policies, but I have never seen enforced in such a way, yeah. and I think really opens up Pandora's box for YouTube um, it, policing people for misbehavior that's not even related to content production or videos or the internet. The last thing I noticed that you, the point you were making that there's all this ideological diversity among these people. The article explicitly treats that as sort of a bad thing, or at least implicitly does. It, it quotes Tucker Carlson as saying, maybe I've just been called a right-wing crazy for so long that I thought I was, but if I agree with pretty much everything Russell Brand says, I don't know what I am. Mm -hmm. So instead of taking that as a sort of a win, like, oh, maybe even Tucker Carlson is acknowledging some more left-leaning populist policies that he would support because there is this overlapping interest with someone like Russell Brand. Maybe maybe that's an opportunity. This, this it's, it's painted here as it's, so it's some kind of trick. I mean, for the New York Times, ideological diversity is someone who hates Trump on the Democratic side and someone who also hates Trump on the Republican side. Yay for intellectual diversity. More rising right after this.